Hello, hello everyone, this is Tip Top Gaming here today with another MTG Arena video. In today's video, I'm going to be playing some Corvold Brawl. So, um, I'm basically playing Corvold, one of the actual Brawl commanders, and I built a deck around him. So, uh, the idea here is that I just keep sacrificing things to make Corvold bigger and draw cards. So, Corvold... Um, yeah, we want to sack things. So we have a really good opening hand with uh, Witch's Oven and the Mayhem Devil. As Mayhem Devil uh, punt allows me to basically kill things by sacrificing things, and Witch's Oven lets me sacrifice things. And technically, Witch's Oven gets you two sacrifice triggers, so I can sacrifice the creature and then I sacrifice the food. So, I have a pretty strong start, but he has Sarkin with the stupid 4-4. Now, what I'm able to do is play Knight of the Evan Legion. Um, and next turn, what I'll be able to do is play Cavalier of Night. So one of the advantages to Witch's Oven is that at any time, I can just sacrifice the creature that's being, like, either about to die, get, uh, is a chump blocker, or is targeted by a spell. So what I was able to do there was I was able to, because he didn't activate Sarkhan's ability to turn him into a creature first, I was able to sacrifice the creature and then deal damage to Sarkhan to kill him. So... Here I have the difficult decision. Do I play Corbold or do I kill things? So I decide that I'm going to wait for something bigger to come down and play Corbold. Now, when he enters the battlefield, I have to sack something. So I sat, I was going to sack the Leaf Kindred. But if I use the Witch's Oven to sack it first and then sack the food that's created, I technically get to deal more damage with Mayhem Devil. So at this point, I have a nice 5-5 Flying Dragon, which is pretty intimidating. I mean... Corvold is very powerful, and we have Great Henge, which will also let us um, kind of rebuild up our hand. So at this point, it looks like we have a ton of value, and he goes to exile my um, Corvold, which is very upsetting because now he costs two more to cast, so he costs actually seven. And then he plays the um, Royal Signs, and I'm like, thank you. So I play Castle Ventress, and then I cast this, being able to target literally everything but an artifact. So I kill his dragon, I kill Prison Realm. I kill Field of the Dead, and I kill the Royal Scions, and that brings back my commander, kills their Field of the Dead, kills their commander, or not their commander, the Royal Scions, and kills their big flyer. So, that move, that one card, pretty much just got rid of every single problem. Now, he plays a 6-6, which would generally be a problem, but I'm able to play Gilded Goose, um, and, you know, I'm not super worried about it. Um, one of the brilliant things about Lotus Field is since I'm sacrificing two lands, um, I'm able to technically two sacrifice triggers, and so I get to draw two cards, put two counters on Corvold, and deal two damage. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy. So if, in this deck, in this scenario, with Priest of the Forgotten Gods, I can make them lose two life, draw a card, add two mana, draw two more cards, deal two damage to something, it is honestly crazy. And at this point, it doesn't matter, because I have an 8-8 flyer, and he has eight life. Alrighty, so that was it for that game. So here we have, again, which is Oven and Mayhem Devil, which is an awesome combo, but here we have a little bit more of a controlling hand with Plague Crafter, which makes both players sacrifice something, and um, Murder's Rider, which lets me kill stuff. Now, here I actually bought the Corvold style because it costs gold, and I'm like, well, this is going to go away soon, so I should get this now. Um, yeah. So I pretty much explained to you how the deck works. Um, it's very fun. I'm gonna, I plan on bringing you guys Brawl videos every Wednesday this month, and then the very last week of the month, it's going to be a Brawl video every single day, which I'm super hyped for. It's a lot of work, though, since you can only play Brawl on Wednesdays, um, but I'm super excited for that, um, so stay tuned for that. I believe that's actually next week. That's Wow, that's coming up quickly. Um, so here, I'm able to play Corvold, and I'm able to sacrifice the food that I created by sacrificing my Mayhem Devil. Unfortunately, I did have to sacrifice Mayhem Devil. It is Singleton, so... Yeah, but I now have a 5-5 Flyer, and I just pulled Judith, which is um, not as good as Mayhem Devil, but it, she bo does boost the power of all mine creatures, and um, allows me to ping things for killing things. So at this point, my hand is looking pretty good. If I can pull another mana, I have access to Garut Cursed Huntsman, which allows me to not only kill things, but also his plus, or his zero, I guess it is, creates two creatures that are awesome for sacking. Why? Because, well, I can keep creating them, and they add loyalty when they die, so they're perfect for sacking. So you'll notice, I believe that's what I do. I play Garut, and I actually just create two, two, two. So you'll notice something I can do here that's really awesome. Um, 
is I'm able to block things with them and then sack them before they die to the block to like get a food token. Which also, since I'm sacking them, Corvold will uh, it can um, get, like draw you a card. So what he's going to do here is he's going to be an idiot. So he attacks with just Ronus and he attacks at me. So what I do is I actually make a stupid mistake here. I let... I just block with both of them. I could have sacked one for food, but what that does is it puts enough loyalty to not only ultimate group, but leave him alive. So what I'm able to do is play Judith, and then I play this to murder the Planeswalker, which I don't want to deal with, I believe is who I target. Yeah, I, I target his commander. Um, honestly, I probably should have targeted Chandra there, but it, it doesn't really matter. I have a 10-9, and everything has plus 3, plus 3 in Trample, um, because I was able to ultimate Garouk. So... Generally, this deck can do really well because it can get, kill its own creatures in order for Garouk to do well. Um, so they are able to like get some card advantage with Chandra, but it really doesn't matter because even like one ones for me are actually four four tramplers. So he has this army of creatures. I have a ten nine, um, and so he is about to go to combat, and we'll see what happens. Alright, so he attacks with the 6-6 six, six with Death Touch, and actually, what I do is I take the damage. Now, you might be like, why are you getting yourself so low? You're fighting against a red deck. No, part of that is I have Cavalier of Night. Second off, I have a food. Now, Cavalier of Night lets me basically throw one of my wolves at Ronus to kill him, so he's no longer a threat. As well, the wolves group creates are 6-5s with Trample, and he creates two of those every turn. And if technically I get enough of them killed, I could theoretically make them have plus three, plus three. Garouk is honestly insane. Like, it's so sad that he's not considered to be more powerful. Um, I, I really liked him as a planeswalker. But, yeah. At this point, I have lethal on him next turn with my Corvold. So we'll see what he does. Is he able to kill me? Well, let's find it out. So he he cast Nissa, which is not great, but honestly, what is he gonna do? Create a 3-3? Three, three? That that's the answer. Now he did the stupidest thing. Here's a tip when you're playing Nissa. Don't turn your land in, that's enchanted into a creature. I can kill your mm, it's so dumb. I get that maybe he wanted to use that mana, but he doesn't end up using the mana. He swings with it, which I didn't understand. At least I think he swings with it. But like at least if you're going to turn your mountain into it, into a land, or into a creature, I'm sorry, um, at least then you're not losing the enchantment. I can easily strip away that enchantment by killing the land. It's, I can ease much easier, it's much more easy to kill a creature than it is to kill a land. So you're losing that enchantment, which I think is super duper dumb. Either way, he concedes after realizing that he's not going to be able to get past, and my, my Corvold is just going to kill him. So... Then we move on to the last game, where I fight against Ima Amara. Now, this hand is b meh, because it doesn't have any black mana, but this one's actually pretty good, because we have Cauldron Familiar. Now, we don't have that much to sack, that many sack outlets. I mean, we have Plague Crafter and Savvy Hunter, which allow me, us to sack things. So, it's not terrible, but we do have a really great target for things to sack, which is Cauldron Familiar, because if you can get out Witch's Oven, you can just keep bringing Cauldron Familiar back. So, let's see how this game goes. So, I don't know actually who goes first. Uh, I believe they're going first, so they are going to be able to get their commander out turn two or three if they're playing tap lands. I lied, I go first. Wow, that's weird. So they're not playing tap lands, obviously, so they're about to get their commander out, and I only have a 1-1, one, one, and uh, that's kind of crazy. Now, I don't understand why they shocked that in. They could have done it the other way around, but either way, I play Plague Crafter, forcing them to sack it. Now, for some reason, I decided to sack the Plague Crafter instead of the 1-1, one, one. I don't know if that was my finest move, but either way, I managed to play Savvy Hunter, which allows me to now create food to bring back the, um, the cat. Um, so it's not that big of a deal. Now I play Questing Beast, which is just a powerful green card, and that's why it's in here. Um, so I'm able to hit him for 5, so he's down to 15 already. I'm up to 29. He manages to be able to exile my Questing Beast, which kind of sucks, but... It doesn't really matter. He ends up conceding after realizing I can cast Corval and that I'm going to do really well. Overall, this deck is really, really fun, and it actually is pretty good. I'm going to leave the deck list in the description down below if you guys want to check it out.
If you guys want to see more Brawl content like this, leave a like and comment down below, as well as hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything Magic the Gathering. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have been enjoying Brawl. See you guys in the next video. Bye.